Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, it's time for Charitable Georgia. Brought to you by Bees Charitable Pursuits and Resources. We put the fun in fundraising. For more information, go to beescharitablepursuits.com. That's B E E S charitablepursuits.com. Now, here's your host, Brian Pruitt. Good fabulous Friday. It's another fabulous Friday morning. We've got three more fabulous guests. And again, if this is your first time listening to Charitable Georgia, this is all about positive things happening in the community. And we've got three great folks doing some great things in their communities. So I do have to share there. Last week, I shared the news that we were great grandparents of five black mollies. The had quintuplets. Well, two of them have passed already. Oh. So we're down to three. That's sad. But anyway, I guess that's life. Anyway, now we're going to lighten the mood, right? Yeah. Anyway, happy Friday, everybody. We're going to start this morning with Miss Carrie Shugert, right? You got it. Awesome. See, that's twice in a week. I'll get there. I'll, I'll say it right. You are with the arena out of Bartow County, Carsville, correct? That's correct. So you and I have talked on the phone. You have an incredible story that I'd love for you to share, and we'll talk about what the arena does after you share your story, if you don't mind. Okay. So my name is Carrie Sugart, and I am a person in long-term recovery. And what that means for me is that it's been four years since I've needed to or have used anything to change the way that I feel physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. And I, I tag on spiritually as well because that was a big component of uh, my substance abuse and recovery um, and and learning how to – you know, trust my higher power, which I call God. And so I, I guess a little bit about my story is substance abuse happened after being prescribed pain meds. I've got several chronic orthopedic issues, had my first hip replacement when I was um, 30 and was prescribed opiates pretty much immediately my mind, body, and heart was like, I like this, this, I don't have to feel anything. I don't feel, I have to, have to feel the bad stuff, but you know, you don't feel the good stuff either. Um, but it just worked so well for me. And over the past 10 years after that, it just progressively got worse as my, my, my pain levels got worse and I didn't have the tools to, to deal with them. So, you know, you keep going up in, in prescriptions and, and strengths and there's no choice but to become dependent and then possibly addicted, which I did. Um, and so I guess the irony of the situation is that I am an addiction counselor and I was an addiction counselor when I began my substance misuse. It's because of chronic pain. And I say that out loud, and it still feels kind of weird when I say it, but I want people to know that because addiction and substance abuse can happen to anybody. We are your counselors. We are your doctors. We are your teachers, wives, mothers, friends. Um, It happens to anybody. So as an addiction counselor, I thought I knew a little bit about addiction and recovery, but not until I began my own journey did did I fully understand what it was that we were dealing with when I, and I say this because it's big important. It's a big part of my story too, is that when I went to treatment, I chose to go to treatment for me. That was necessary. Um, I I was just, I had so much shame from being an addiction counselor and becoming, you know, a person with an addiction. And I didn't know what I was going to do with my career, but God told me you're going to use your story and part of your work now. And I didn't know what that looked like. Um, but as time progressed over the last four years, um, I, I, I started on the journey of peer support. And that means that's not a clinical role, but that is a support role um, where we walk along people that are experiencing the same stuff. We've been trained to use our lived experience to uh, support others in their recovery path. And so um, I've been able to accomplish probably more goals in the past four years than I have in my entire life. And I credit that number one to God, but to my recovery. So I'm glad you pointed out about the counselors. I mean, they're human. 
just Absolutely. like everybody else, yeah. you know, and, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a counselor with addictions or if you're a, a Christian counselor, or whatever, they are human. They got things too going on. And so it's their life's not perfect. I'm glad you pointed it out because I know when I was going through some, some counseling for some things that, you know, I always thought, man, this guy's got a, got everything. He's got his whole life control, but I'm sure he had to have a counselor too. To talk Absolutely. To. I mean, we, we all have environments and circumstances that we grow up in. We all experience trauma that looks different for every single person and the way that we end up processing that and learning how to cope is what dictates how well we do uh, in, 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 our, in our total life as we become an adult, you know? And so for me, I just had, it was a perfect storm. I had mental health stuff such as depression and anxiety. I had some, you know, trauma obviously that I'd gone through. And when the opiates came on the scene, it was, it fixed everything. So I didn't have to worry about understanding or trying to deal with anything. That was it, you know? I also think it's, it's, sad that i watched uh dope sick i don't know if you watched that at all on hulu with michael keaton but um you know I, he's the one that kind of started the opioid addiction and and i don't think it well, obviously it wasn't on purpose he just was trying to help everybody in their their pain but um if somebody is listening and has the chronic pain or whatever um i know a lot of people who are who have former addicts and they have pain they ask specifically not to have that given to them but can you give some advice to somebody who may be going through that right now sure and and that's a good point you know if you're if you're struggling with chronic pain even though you stop using opiates or you start your own recovery the pain doesn't go anywhere you've still got to find ways to deal with that and so i I actually just so i've had to learn alternate ways to cope with my pain I just completed a training the beginning of this week with the Christopher Wolf Foundation or Christopher Wolf Crusade, um, learning how to be a um, it's a it's a life care coach. And what that did is that taught us kind of a chronological way and gave us some tools to support somebody specifically if they are post surgical, if they've been prescribed opiates, and that is to start by understanding what the medication is what it does to the brain, how it interacts with other medications, understanding that opiates are, 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 there's not anything to deal with chronic pain that is a silver bullet. There's just not, you know, and that's kind of the same thing for addiction too. There's not a silver bullet. Chronic pain, you've got some, you know, we can't change the way we feel physically, but we can change our perspective and how we think about it. So doing as much as you can to identify your support system what is uplifting to you that you can focus on? That can help shift your perspective. Also, you know, things like deep breathing and, and what we call tracking is looking at scanning your entire body, finding an area of your body that's not quite as on fire, and kind of focusing on that for a minute. Um, some other tools like other grounding tools like um, tapping or progressive muscle muscle relaxation, guided imagery, if meditation, some people just like to, there's a million apps on our phones now to help us kind of zone out. The point is, is we're not trying to ignore the pain. We're not trying to act like it's not there. But let's do some tools to help us make it through because the pain will not last. It ends at some point or it it wanes like a wave. It goes up and, and down, right? So these tools are to get us out of that crisis moment. Are you familiar with infrared light therapy? I am. Yes. Does that work at all with any of the stuff for chronic pain? Do you know? Well, the thing is, is different things work for different people. You know, so what works for me may not work for you and vice versa. They're all tools in our toolbox. And so absolutely the, the red light infrared, the, um, cryotherapy or the, the, you know, getting in the, the, the cold room and getting that's great for inflammation. Some people do better with heat, you know, a hot tub. I sleep every single night for the past 10 years. I've slept with a heating pad on my feet because I have a lot of nerve pain and it just it, it helps me with my pain as I'm going to sleep. So just knowing that there's so many tools. One thing that we identified as one of the top things that you feel when you have chronic pain is that you feel out of control. You feel like something's happening to you and you can't stop it. And so that's a powerless feeling. So finding something that you can have power over, and that is your heart, that is your mind, and that's the way we cope with it. 
I think it's important that you talk about knowing the tools, but also knowing the triggers on anything. Cause when I was going through my counseling and, you know, my big thing was how I dealt with grief that wasn't very healthy. And, and it wasn't until the last time I was in therapy that they taught me what the triggers were for that. So I'm sure that's probably a big thing you guys talk about as well. Absolutely. That's a huge part of it is knowing, cause there's so many things that can, and so triggers can, we can identify triggers in correlation to chronic pain. We also talk about triggers with addiction and recovery, right? And a lot of times there are a lot of the similar, similar things, especially the emotional stress, physical stress, things like that. Um, so being able to identify your triggers, being able to identify your physical triggers, like what does your body feel like in those moments that you're going through crisis, whether it is pain, whether it is a high risk situation with addiction is, do I feel some chest tightness right now? Or am I clenching my fist? Am I pacing? Am I feeling swimming my head? Then, then you can know that something's coming on. And so you can begin using some of those tools to kind of, you know, decrease the, the momentum of that. So let's talk about the arena. Share what you guys do, the vision, how it got started. Absolutely. So it got started as a, an, an effort from a wonderful lady and mentor, Barbara Hoffman. And she, and she's okay with me saying this, is she has struggled with um, a, a child, a son that's had a 20 year opiate addiction. And so as an ally, from that point of view, that's very, that's very, um, unique as well. And so in 2019, she realized that there was just not a lot of resources for families. So she just started researching and she, you know, God placed that in her heart and she contacted the Georgia Council for Recovery, which is kind of a, a larger organization in the state that, that um, kind of not governs us but supports us, and said, "What do we need? What do we need to do to be able to get something like that in Bartow County?" And they said, "We need a champion." And Barbara said, "I can do that." So, with prayer, hard work, assembling, you know, a, an awesome group of, of peers that were in recovery in Bartow County, and some stakeholders, that began the course for what is now the arena. And so, the arena is um, we are part of Recovery Bartow. So it's, Recovery Barto is kind of the umbrella. So the Recovery Community Organization is a place where we support and provide resources for people in recovery or seeking recovery. So that means walking along with them and using our lived experience because everybody that's employed there is in recovery. Um, we've gotten um, certifications, just trainings to be able to teach us how to use our lived experience. So we can help them find what their recovery pathway is because what we've learned is, and what I believe, is there's a lot of different ways to do things, right? What Again, what works for me doesn't always work for you. So we can help present them with a lot of different options and help them identify what are their strengths, what are you interested in, how do you learn best, helping them identify their where they're at in their stage of readiness and change, you know, and so if they, if they're wanting to go to traditional treatment, then we find a place and we, 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 uh, start that referral process. If it's, if it's an outpatient situation, if they're wanting to do one on one peer coaching where they just meet with us and we kind of support them and walk along them, that's part of it. A lot of people have found that's very helpful. It's a little bit, we, tr- it's a, it's a non judgmental place where you're sitting with someone who's been through it. So also we connect with resources in the community, whether it be food, um, health care, behavioral health care, um, resources for housing, um, transportation, helping people get jobs. Um, we partner with Family Treatment Court, um, let's see, Mental Health Court, DFACS, supporting those families as well. So again, we provide resources and support for people in recovery or seeking recovery anywhere on that spectrum also families, and friends. So how did the name The Arena come about? So the name of The Arena came about from um, Roosevelt's famous speech, The Man in the Arena. And so I don't have the whole thing memorized. I'm not even going to try to act like I do. (laughs) But in it, it talks about the perspective of anybody outside the struggle doesn't matter. What matters is the man that's in the arena, walking the walk, fighting the fight, that's the perspective that matters. And so we need to champion those who have gone through struggles. We need to champion them and believe in them 
I 100% if Barbara Hoffman, and I've had a lot of people believe in me in my life, but Barbara Hoffman believed in me and has given me the opportunity to grow and develop into um, a leadership role that I'm in now and being able to head this up. And it's, it's just a joy. It is my work is as important to my recovery as anything else is. I love it. I can't imagine doing anything else now. And I wish everybody could have a job where they're working their passion. And that's important because I mean, that's why I started my, my business, Be Charitable Pursuits and Resources. It's, it's a passion for helping others. And, uh, yeah, if you don't have a passion of what you're doing and you're very unhappy, find your passion. Um, I have a question though. You talked about the arena being under the umbrella of recovery Bartow. So, it's you guys don't have a separate 501c3 so the 501c3 is recovery bartow yep. all right and then so the, there's a larger vision for recovery bartow a you know crisis or safe house um programming for teens that we're working on um sober houses things of that nature and so the arena is one offshoot off of recovery bartow so if they if somebody donated and they donated to recover can they specify that it goes to the arena it's it's all in one pool right okay. now so right. recovery bar so recovery org. um there's a way that you can give there so i don't even have to ask that she already did it that's good if somebody's listening though and wants to get a hold of you and talk about some how you can you can help them or get if somebody at the arena can talk to them how can they do that absolutely so we are located at 109 stonewall street in cartersville georgia it's easy, pretty easy to find. Our telephone number is 470-315-4025, and we are there Monday through Friday from 9 to 5. Awesome. Do you guys have anything coming up, any fundraisers coming up you want to share that you or anything going on that you can share? So I would like to just share some of the events and sure. the programming that we have going on. We have um, a Narcotics Anonymous meeting on Tuesday at 1230, an all-recovery meeting on Thursday at 1230, and another Narcotics Anonymous meeting on Friday night. Um, today, um, a couple of my staff have gone to Crossroads Treatment Center in Calhoun. They're having a big, um, resource fair and open house. And so we've gone there. Yesterday, we had a, 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 a big event with, um, DFACS Family Treatment Court, a big lunch and learn yesterday. Tomorrow is pretty busy. We've got one team going to Bless Coalition down at Glade Road. Um, Alatoona Resource Center, that's something that they do every third Saturday of the month, and it's just an outreach event. We've got another team going to the Boys and Girls Club Color Run that they're having and setting up. So our next fundraiser is going to be our um, motorcycle ride for recovery, and that's going to be on August 12th, I believe. Um, you can follow us on Facebook at The Arena, um, RCO, and follow us there you can find out all the information but that this will be our first motorcycle ride we're really excited about it um i think there's so many different groups of our our community that want to be involved and so we've got to create opportunities for that to happen and connecting with you know all the parts of our community so we're super excited about that that gives me an idea stone but instead of the motorcycle ride let's do a golf cart ride I like it. I'm down for that. Right. I mean, we can do do that for. <laughs> totally down for that. We had an art. We had we set last month was um, Mental Health Awareness Month, so we worked with Mental Health Court, and we had a just kind of a celebration day for them, and had a, 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 a an art class, and uh, one of the judges came out, and it was just so joyous and fun, and. So we were sitting around, and she was like, you know, I just, one of the girls was like, I don't paint very well. And I'm like, I don't either. She was like, now give me some Legos. I'm like, that's it. That's it. <laughs> nice. Lego, Lego party. There you go. There you go. Uh, so it's kind of, if you guys know Bob Brooks, he's been on the show, or Ben Hanks and the Carswell Business Club, we, they preach collaboration over competition. And it's awesome to see several nonprofits doing that. Uh, because there's more than just you guys in Bartow County dealing with the addictions. We've had Kevin Harris on talking about All In Out Ministries. I know he does some work with you, as well as Rebecca Rees from the Carswell Women's Outreach that's coming aboard, and they're doing the same thing for women. Um, so can you speak about how, I mean, multiple organizations coming together, because Kevin just helps men, Rebecca and them just do women, but you guys do kind of everything. Are there different Everybody does something different, but they all can do the same thing, right? Oh, absolutely. And when you were saying that, naming off those organizations and those people, I literally got chills because that is, it's awesome. It's awesome. We need 
as many people championing this effort as possible. We need we need men, we need women, we need faith based, we need evidence based, we need clinical, we need peer based. Everybody deserves a seat at the table. We all have um, an area of service, and being able to collaborate just it it magnifies the things that we already do. And our partnerships are as important as anything because if I've got somebody coming in and they're 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 newly pregnant or they're needing some child care issues, I can refer to Barto Family Resources. If I've got somebody that's got rent issues like that, I can call Susan Barfield at Barto Community Resources. If I've got a man that needs some mentoring, I can call Kevin. It's it's just an amazing opportunity and and the network that we have built in Bartow County so that we can all work together to 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 be more effective and efficient. And I'm guessing that if somebody is from outside of Bartow County but need the help, you guys can work with them as well. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, we we refer all over the state, multiple states, you know, as far as treatment goes. If somebody's moving into an area or lives in an area and and we can also connect with another RCO in that county because a lot of counties in Georgia now are having the recovery community organizations. So I can call Brittany down at Living Proof in Rome and say, hey, what all you've got going on here? I've got a, I've got a peer that's either moving there or there are cases out of here. How can we support them? Awesome. You spoke briefly just a little bit. Obviously, uh, financial donations are, are good for you guys. Are there other ways that businesses could get involved and volunteers can get involved with you guys? Sure, absolutely. So the the events are, are one of the big um, opportunities, but we need volunteers all the time. And so obviously financial sponsorship, financial donation is, is the bread and butter of, of the financial support. It just is our money comes from donations and grants, you know, Grants are hard to do. They're hard to get. And that's just the way it works for a nonprofit, you know. So any, any support here, if you hear about us, tell somebody else, follow us on social media, share our, um, posts. I found that that's one of the best ways to get information out and, um, you know, come to our events. So other than the reason of your, your story, your history, wanting to help the people with addictions, why is it important for you to be part of the community? It's important for me to be a part of the community because of that connection. My life is filled with hope and joy and abundance and connection. Addiction is the opposite of that. It's isolated. It's secret. It's dark. You don't want to talk to other people. You don't want to connect. So for me, it's kind of necessary to kind of always be connected with, with others in the community and, you know, I do what I do because I want people, other people to be able to experience what I do. I want other people to understand or experience that recovery can be the expectation and not the exception. Um, I just love working with other people and other organizations and us helping each other out. You know, that's, we live in a tough world, a lot of pain and darkness in this world, but we can help each other out. It's all about relationships and, and offering, you know, the hope to each other. All right, so one last time, share the website. www.recoverybarto.org. Awesome. All right, don't go anywhere because we're not done, but we're going to move over to Miss Ashley Spivey. All right, good morning. So we've had people stoned so far from Gordon, Cobb, Cherokee, Barto, and now we've got somebody from Polk County in the studio. All right. Where I told I told Sharon this one, I said, I'm going to try to get all the way down to Macon. I'm going to try to get everybody from state somehow, so we'll do it. So, Ashley, thanks for coming, being on the show. You're with High Five Society, correct? Yes, sir. High Five Society. So um, we'll talk about that here in a second. But it's um, if you don't mind sharing your story, share your story, and then we'll talk about why you're doing High Five Society. All right. Well, my story, um, I graduated from college in 2017 with a bachelor's in health and human services and a bachelor's in healthcare administration. I have two absolutely amazing boys who both were diagnosed with autism in 2020. They have autism and ADHD. Um, let's see. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2012. And all of that together, I'm not that great at talking about myself, but all of that together helped me want to form High Five Society High Five Society has given me back so much purpose in my life for, you know, me and my boys. 
So go ahead and share what, what you're doing with High Five Society. Okay, great. Um, okay, High Five Society, we're a nonprofit for individuals with special needs. Um, kids, teenagers, adults, I want to help them all. Um, but we have monthly social groups where they work on their so many things, their fine motor skills, their socialization skills, which are needed throughout life for their their um learning to take turns, basic stuff, learning to take turns. Um sorry, my mind just went blank. That's all Thank right. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> communication. Um taking turns. Communication. There's one more. My mind went blank. I'm gonna come back to that. But anyways, we have our monthly social groups. During the summer, we're meeting more frequently every Tuesday right now. But I've had some people come to me. That's not working. But uh, we're meeting more frequently throughout the summer. Um, We also have our parent support groups where the parents, they come out to our events and they can get their needed resources. While if I have enough volunteers, I try to make it to where when the individuals come out, they can go be taken to go do something of their choice while the parents can do something of their choice, which is usually just to sit back and get a breather, um, connect with people. That's really high five society. I want to connect everyone and high five. You know? Right. Yeah, no, it's cool because, I mean, you think about it, um, this is another uh, a group that I think is – forgotten about or looked down on is right, the special absolutely. needs. Um, and then most people don't think about the parents of special needs kids. They need a break. They needed something to do for themselves every once in a while to get that, to have a uh, date night or whatever. So it's awesome that you're doing this. So Polk County right now is where you're at, correct? Right. In Polk County, uh, very small. Polk is very small. I believe it has a population of 55,000. I moved from a city that had 150,000. So, one thing that got me to start High Five Society was the lack of resources. Um, man, there's just nothing there. It was a complete culture shock. It still is. Um, but the lack of resources, I wanted to create something for my boys to be a part of. So can you share about what some of those resources may be? Well, I can't bring therapies to Polk right now. I'm working on that. But um, the resources, like, the parent support, the family support, um, the resources that I was used to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, just, you just, just talk about the resources. I mean, that's a good start. So, because uh, I think people think about the special needs and the resources may be uh, when they, they may have just well, what is a resource for that? You okay. know what I'm so, a resource could be anything from how am I going to pay my light bill this month to what are we going to put on the table? Well, what can our kids go do to interact with other kids? And those to me are resources that I yeah. feel that everyone should be able to have, Definitely. not just because you're from a small town. And right. And I also think, I mean, there's other organizations out there that do this, and I'm assuming you, you, you'll get to do this as well, but teaching some of these kids how to live on their own. Life skills, yes. Life skills. Yes. Well, yeah. We want to get to that point. We're still fairly new. Um, I started this organization about a year ago, and then I had a really bad flare-up, um, really took me off my feet. And then I got over the flare-up. I was like, okay, January, this past January, I was like, let's do this. So got it started back up, and right now um, I believe we have 155, 154 people in our Facebook group, but for Polk, that's a lot. Yeah. I mean. Right. So uh, if you somebody who's listening may not know multiple sclerosis, you are, you're That's right. just distracting her. Sorry, oh, no. Sorry. She, oh, <laughs> let's let Lauren be a part I know, of this. I know. I <laughs> know. Uh, somebody who's listening may not know what multiple sclerosis is, right? even though it's been a while. Can you maybe share how that affects you and what, what kind of, what, what, what basically what it is? Well, multiple sclerosis is a disease of the central nervous system. It's where your myelin cell, no, your nerves protect that and nerve damage. I mean, it it causes lesions on your brain, your brain and your spinal cord. So, like for me personally, I get brain fog a lot. I can't think right. 
people see me and, woo, you know, that's probably maybe what they think. I right. don't know. Um, and that, but yeah, it has so many challenges in it. And I think that's where I can really relate to the individuals that I want to help because I have my challenges. They have theirs. Right. So. Well, I think it's important. I mean, even with Carrie, right? You talked about it. if you haven't lived in something like that, even though you may want to help those people, it's somebody who's lived through or living through that. Helping those is going to be much, to me, much more powerful than I don't have special needs. Well, Lauren may say I do, but I don't have special needs. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, but somebody who, who comes in and, and can say, you know what, um, I know what you're going through. I'd love to sit down and talk to you. I, there's other things I can do that with other people, but I just think it's great that we have people who are unfortunately or fortunately live through that or living through that that can provide those the resources for that. So um, obviously you said you're, you're fairly new, so you guys need a lot of things. How we, can people get involved and help you? Yeah, we do need a lot of things. We need everything from financial sponsors to volunteers. If I can have enough volunteers come out to the events, then I can really focus on the parents, and they need it a lot. It's great for the kids to be able to come out and work on everything and make friends, but the parents are exhausted. You can see it in their eyes. That the, Our first event, one of the first things I noticed, and I was like, we're adding parent support to this. So I want to help because I grew up with a special needs brother also. My mama never got a break. There wasn't anybody. And then we move up here and there's not anyone because my mom passed away. And most of these parents that I've made these connections with, they don't have any family. So we kind of just connect and become each other's village of support. All right. So share if somebody's listening and wants to help you. How can they get a hold of you? How can they help you? All Our right. number is um, 678-675-3303. Our website, which you should check out because I did it all myself. Nice. did a great um, job, y'all. Thank yeah. you. Um, our website is www.highfivesociety.org. Um, no hyphens. So remember that for the website, no hyphens. Uh, for our Facebook page, there is a hyphen. It's high-five-society. And then our Facebook group is high-five-society parent support. Um, try to keep that one more private because the parents like to vent but if you're from, from Polk County and you have a special needs child and you haven't heard of us, definitely join the group. Um, yeah, definitely. If you're listening and, you're, and you do need that, do reach out to Ashley. That's amazing. So uh, you shared a little bit of stuff that you got going on, but anything immediately coming up, any fundraisers coming up that you want to share? We do have, um, let's see, this Tuesday we're going to Peak Forest Park. And on the 24th, we're going to Big Springs in Cedar Town. Um I need help with fundraisers. I really do. Um, I, I think I know a guy. <laughs> really? <laughs> there is a fundraiser that's about to start. Hi, I'm Lauren, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, there is a fundraiser that's about to start. We're going to do a, a bunch of different little things. We're going to be doing T-shirt fundraisers, um, sensory bag fundraisers. We have somebody in our group that actually made a quilt. Yes, Heidi she LaBeige. did. She we did a, a shout, handmade shout her. Um, quilt that is for autism support. It's very beautiful. We'll put it's on our. Uh, it's about to be on our page. Um, but we do have a lot of different small fundraisers that are going on on the website and on the um, Facebook groups and pages. So yeah, we do currently have sell T shirts. Um, if someone could buy a T shirt, you know, there's a little link you could donate if you don't want a shirt. That's okay. You know? Right. Right. Awesome. So other than the reason of, of having kids, you, you're yourself going through things and stuff of helping these folks. Why is it important for you to be part of the community? Um, oh, man, Carrie McTook connections. Oh, you can to say be connections too. No, I don't <laughs> want to say connections too. Um, to be a part of the community means to help bring greater things about and, with the, with the support of the community, we can help these individuals really shine and reach their full potential. And that's what I want to do. Awesome. So share your website one more time. Highfivesociety.org. Awesome. All right. Don't go anywhere. We're going to move over to our next guest. Let me go do it. Let me see if I don't chop it up. Lauren Samani. 
Somini. See, I did it. <laughs> it's Somini I, like hominy. Uh, well, you know, I guess I get to do it wrong all the time anyway. So. It's okay. It's fine. So Lauren, uh, she's actually come aboard and being my assistant and uh, amazing. And she's obviously involved with High Five Society. She does a lot of things. So Faithful Hands Virtual Assistant and Cute and Peachy Gifts. Things. Well, it's gifts too. Sure. Things. <laughs> It's okay. It's you cute and tell, peachy things. Yes. Yeah, you can tell we don't get along. So Not at all. Uh, so I, if you don't mind sharing your story, because you had to kind of reinvent yourself. I did. So um, I'm actually going to start a little bit like at the beginning, okay? Yeah, that's great. All right. I don't think you've actually ever heard the beginning. Well, I'm waiting to hear. Okay, let's hear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I actually was homeschooled, and I finished school really, really early. And... Um, Early being like 14 years old, and I'm not extra super smart. Don't say that. But um, I really didn't. No. Okay. Um, I just really wanted to get done really fast because I didn't want to do it anymore. And so I just sped through my classes. I passed them, and I was like, okay, we're good. No more. We're done. Um, So being so young and graduated, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And um, my mom kept me very involved in our church and um, in different things. She had a lot. She has a lot of friends and they would offer for me to come and work for them. So I've worked for um, a tax firm. I've worked for our church being a, um, a pastor's assistant. I've worked in a daycare. I've started my own daycare. I've I've done everything because I had no idea what I wanted to do. And then um, when I was 17, my chiropractor um, asked me to come and be a chiropractic assistant. Um, I will have to say I had no idea what a chiropractic assistant was, and I absolutely love it still to this day. Um, so it was just, it was a full time, but it was a part time. It was only three days a week and I absolutely loved it, but I did not being a chiropractic assistant. Um, you're more behind a desk and in the details of the business part instead of in the back room with the patients. And as much as I loved being at the front desk and being in the details, I loved being able to see patients coming in like doubled over and hurting and then being able to walk out straight. And I was like, well, that's not fair. I want to be a part of that. And so I prayed and I prayed and I was like, God, what do I need to do to be a part of that? And, um, I actually injured my ankle, um, during high school. I was at a, I was in a co-op and I was a cheerleader and I had sprained my ankle and it just kept re-spraining. And then in um, January 2014, I ended up having to have ankle surgery and I was down. I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything for like eight weeks. And I was like, okay, this could be my time to really try and become that person that helps the patients instead of just taking money from the patients, you know. And um, I prayed and I prayed and I went and I had to get a massage because um, I was in so much pain with my having to be laid up all the time. And so um, the massage therapist that I had seen, they were like, are you a massage therapist? And I was like, no, I'm not a massage therapist. What are you talking about? And they were like, well, I can just feel like, and I was totally creeped out by this, but they were like, I could just feel the healing off of you. And I was like, you're giving me a massage. Like I should be feeling that from you, not the other way around. They're like, I don't know. Maybe you should just look into it. And so I was like, Okay, so I went home and I looked up massage school and it was only going to be seven months long. And I was like, well, maybe this can happen. And um, at this time, that I don't know if you're familiar with that Jesus Calling book, like they yep. had the daily things. Yep. Um, that was very popular then. And one of the doctors that I worked for, she had given it to me during my healing process. And I opened it up that day and it like basically that one was like, you're about to go through an amazing adventure and you just need to jump in head first. And I was like, head first? <laughs> like, are we really going to do this right now? I mean, I hadn't worked. I hadn't decided. I mean, I was supposed to go back to work. And so I had contacted the doctor that was over and I was like, um, I think I want to go to massage school. And she said, I think that's a great idea. You should do that. And I was like, okay, but what about work? And she said, it's going to be here for you. You know, and so I went to massage school and I absolutely loved it. It was amazing for me because um, I I really felt like I blossomed because 
I took what I had learned at the chiropractor's office, being her assistant. She did bring me back whenever we weren't busy in the front office. She would bring me back, and she had taught me some things. And I was able to watch her manipulate some of the bones and, like, being able to see the patients change and move and and all of the different things. So I, that knowledge that she had taught me went hand-in-hand hand with – massage and I absolutely loved it. Um, and then I found out that I was pregnant two weeks before I graduated massage school. So all of my plans of being the absolute best massage therapist that first year kind of went out the window. Um, and I didn't go back to work right away because I was terrified of being pregnant. Um, I was told when I was 18 that I wasn't going to be able to have kids. So the doctor that told me pregnant that I was pregnant, I was like, you lied. <laughs> <laughs> um, you totally lied to me. And he was like, well, some things happened. And I was like, yeah, some things do. So um, I had my little man and um, I did not want to let anybody else raise him. Like I didn't want to take him to daycare. I didn't want to. Um, have to do any of that. I wanted to, I had always dreamed of being a stay at home mom. Um, but you can't do that when you're a single mom and you're only 22. And so it worked out that the chiropractor's office was only three days a week. And, um, I lived close enough that I would be able to go and take my lunch break at home and be with him. And my mom, um, was at home with him. So it was, it was great for me. And so, um, after about a year, um, I started my own massage practice. I was ready to really dive into that massage. Um, and I loved it. And still to this day, I still love it. Um, but I had my own massage practice for, um, almost, almost seven years. And then, um, last August, unfortunately, I had a very bad, um, back injury. All we can really find out or all the doctors can really tell me is that I just overused my back because um, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia when I was 23 and um, I never took any medicine. I didn't do the normal treatment for it. I just took care of it on my own. I did some diet changes, I exercised and everything. And then in August, because of the overuse of so much my body was just like, you're done. You can't, you really can't do this anymore. And I was really, really mad because I didn't feel like I was working whenever I did massage. I absolutely loved it. When y'all were talking about that whole passion thing, that was me. I loved it. I could not wait to get to work. I could not wait to be able to watch those people change. And it was because of what God had given me, the gift of healing and everything. And then I felt like it was completely ripped away from me, but it wasn't ripped away from me because I still had it. I just couldn't use it anymore. And I was mad. I went into a very deep depression and I was really mad because I'm still a single mom. Um, and I can't, can't work. I can't, I couldn't do anything. Um, and I was like, okay, well maybe if I just take a couple months off and just really rest, no, it got worse and it just kept getting worse. And I was like, okay, God, well then what am I supposed to do? So I started, um, what was a hobby and like a, um, creative outlet for me. Um, one of my friends, Anna, she told me, Hey, you should start a really, uh, like an actual business out of this. And I was like, uh, I don't know about that. And she's like, no, I think it'd be really good. And we can gear it towards, businesses, not just personal items, but let's do businesses where you take the business's logo and you put it on the promotional items, whether it be t-shirts, cups, bags, you know, whatever the thing is. And I was like, okay, let's do it. Well, that was really slow. Um, it, it mm -mm, yeah, <laughs> everybody and their mom can do this. So it's very, it's a very competitive thing. And so, and I am not a competitive person. If you want to use somebody else, by all means, do it. I'm good, you know? Um, but it was something that I loved doing still. It was still a really good creative hobby for me. And so I did that. And then, um, she started asking me about like, well, what else can you do? And, and I was like, I really miss the business side of stuff because I can actually do it. Um, I love being in the details and being in the, in the midst of all of the chaos and being able to organize it and, 
and it be beautiful for everybody else to see, but I've got all the craziness with me, you know? And so that's where um, Faithful Hands came from. Well, you, I'm going to disagree with you on one thing because you said everybody and their mother can do the promotional <laughs> items. I had a business doing promotional items, and it was an absolutely pain in the patootie. Oh, because of the details on the back end of the promotional yeah. item sites, so it's, you can have all of it. Okay. Trust me. Thanks. Right, so. <laughs> I'll take it. Yes. Um, no, so, I mean, that's that's great. So, Faithful Hands, share with somebody, obviously it's in the name, but share with somebody who might not know what a virtual assistant does. So, a virtual assistant really can do anything. Um, every virtual assistant has a specialty. Um, mine is... I really like the details and the things that you don't like and you would think that I wouldn't like, I really do. So um, organizing email accounts, I could like doing that, sending out emails for some of us, like Mr. Brian over here. <laughs> um, I like to word up, like you give me what you want to say and then I'll make it pretty with the help of Anna sometimes. <clears throat> and or, then, or my wife does that too. Say so help. She helps a lot of stuff I send to you. It's already... Well, good. Her, See, so. <laughs> that helps me out a lot. Right. Um, but also I can help with organizing, scheduling, you know, phone calls. Um, if you have a list of people that you need to say, hey, you know, yada, 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 but you don't have the time to call, I can be your girl. So virtual assistant, meaning you can be with your a client of yours could be you're working with somebody in Washington State. Yeah, it can be. Um, I do. I am a more personable personable person, so I like to meet with them at least once. I don't have to. That's not a requirement. But because I like to be personal with somebody, I I enjoy seeing, like, I'm a very visual person, so I, I'm really good at following directions, so you tell me how you want it done. You got it. Which is kind of... Odd that you say that because you told me not too long ago you're engaged. I am. And you're going to be moving to not, uh, Nashville. Uh, 45 miles north of Nashville. I know, but that's not here, so you and I can't meet in person. So I still have family here, <laughs> and I will still be coming to Georgia. And it's really only like a three-and-a-half-hour drive. Right, right. And there's Chattanooga. <laughs> Which is in between. Right? right. No, but I just think it's cool, though, because uh, obviously virtual, I mean, obviously that's before Zoom, there was Skype. You could mm -hmm. just do all that on online. So, And if you upgrade to an Apple, you could FaceTime me. <clears throat> well, just saying. some of us are uh, peaches more than apples. <clears throat> that's why you have I'm just saying. <laughs> I know. But I'm a peach and an apple. Huh? Well, there you go. There you go. All right, so you are doing a lot of things with, like I said, with myself, helping all the nonprofits I'm doing with Ashley and High Five Society. Mm -hmm. um, why is it important for you to, to be a part of the community and helping as many people as you do? That's a really hard question. You heard and me I, ask the other two. You knew it was coming. I knew it was coming, but I really, my biggest my passion has always been to help people. I I like to, like I said, I'm a visual person. I like to see the change. I want to be a part of that change, but I don't want the credit for that change. You know, um, I've always been a behind the scenes kind of girl. And um, every now and again, you know, somebody saying thank you or, hey, she really helped me or whatever. That fills my bucket so much. Just those small little words. Um, I have always loved, loved, loved seeing the community changing and getting better and bigger and growing in those things. And like Ashley was saying um, <clears throat> with hers, she wanted to see Polk County, you know, include the special needs community and different things like that. But what she doesn't see is that they're growing. They are expanding there. She wasn't able to, tell everything but there are people in mcdonough that are contacting her to ask for some help with this and people all over she was invited to harrelson county to do some other things and i love seeing and being a part of those little details you know and so that's my biggest thing for the community well that's cool because i, I tell people all the time my three passions are sports fundraising and, and connecting others with others because i love when i like you connected me with Ashley mm -hmm. and I love when I see the connections working Yes, with, with, you know, how now they all not going to work. There's some right. people that just, 
fall off and whatever happens happens but um all right so share how can somebody get a hold of you if they want to talk to you about your faithful hands or if they want to talk about some promotional items how can they do that <clears throat> my phone number <laughs> my phone number is 678-699-5076 and um the best email and the easiest to remember is cute the letter in peachy things at gmail.com so i gotta tell you she she was the one that provided my mother and my wife their mother's day gifts and my mother absolutely loved it i got her a bag with she's little likes elephants too and i got her with a bag with but lauren obviously she's a I very perfectionist out. she didn't like will it come out but my mother loved it so and i said if she doesn't like it i'm gonna make another one because i am a perfectionist and i was like i don't think <laughs> but she I didn't like have this. to worry about it it was all good so all right, so I got two more questions for each of you. You cheated and listened to the one, but I'm not going to ask that one yet. So, oh, dang it. I um, was prepared. <laughs> you asked me that one because I didn't cheat. No, yeah. So, um, you, all three of you have had to reinvent yourself, right? So, um, share some advice. I mean, this is all, all three of you are going to share it advice on reinventing yourself because I, there's people listening that are probably going through that exact thing right now. So Carrie, I'll start with you. How can you help somebody going through that? And my, what can you share about in reinventing yourself? Right. So, you know, one of the themes among all of us is that word resiliency. And that was one of the things we were talking about in this training this week is what is resiliency? And I usually think of a ball bouncing up a rubber ball, a rubber ball, you throw it down, but it bounces up, right? It's the ability to come back after something hard, after going lower, you know. And I think number one is realizing that you're going to make mistakes and you're going to get it wrong, and that's okay. That's part of the process. Um, the only way you can succeed at anything is crapping out on it, you know, 10, 15, 99 times. That's how, you know, and that was something I didn't understand for so long in my life. I just wanted to succeed. I wanted to achieve that high goal, didn't know how, and then couldn't, and was a failure over and over and over again until I started accomplishing some smaller things, you know, and understanding that the failures is what has brought me to the day, and that's what gives us the, William, the, the wisdom that we do. So being kind to yourself and understanding that, that, that not getting it is, is part of the success. So we sh- I shared this a couple weeks ago. Or, um, I was told to read the book Fail Forward from John Maxwell, and it's an amazing book because you talk about failure. And like before I started this business, I shut down three businesses, and I was like, man, I am a failure. I'm not providing for the family. But you're right. It's things you learn, and it gets you to where you need to be, and don't look at it as a failure. It's just a stepping stone. So, Ashley, give me something. If somebody's listening needs to reinvent themselves, what can you tell them? What kind of advice can you give them? I really like that you said not to, the only way you can um, carry, sorry, um, is something about crapping out. And that's, yeah, exactly. That's, that says it perfectly. The only way you can fail is to not try with, you know, the MS, the depression, with everything. If I just sit on the couch and feel, feel bad, feel like crap, then um, things are just going to keep being crap. But if I get up and try to do something, then we're going to have something. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Oh, that's okay. awesome. All right, Lauren. <clears throat> well, um, I was in a, in a uh, church service earlier this year, and one of the biggest things that this pastor said was to pray and ask God, how can you be thankful for the place that you're in whenever you feel like a failure? And that has hit me so hard because – I did feel like a failure because I couldn't do massage anymore. And I knew that God had given me that gift of helping somebody heal. Um, and so I just kept praying and I kept praying and I was like, God, how can I be thankful for something that I didn't want to happen? <laughs> and um, it was very difficult, but that I just, I still, you know, it's, I'm going to be honest. I don't know how I can be thankful right now, but I'm thankful for, that I'm still able to walk and I'm thankful that I may not, I may be in pain 24 seven, but it comes in waves to where I'm not having to be on 
on, on an, I don't have an addiction to pain medicine and I don't have the things that normal normally would be really difficult or whatever. Um, so that's where I'm at my thankful, but I'm not sure how I can be thankful that, you know, that kind of thing. So that's one of my things. So you talk about the thing. Well, again, somebody else is a different person told me to start a gratitude journal. So every morning I used to write down three <laughs> things that I'm thankful for. And it could be, you could repeat them, you know, but that's, that's kind of helped me as well. Yeah. That's one of the, the number one first things that I ask somebody that I'm working with doing peer coaching to do. Okay. Start a gratitude list. Whether it's in the morning or at night, I don't care. Whether it's in your head or on paper, I don't care. At least five things, and then we move up from there. Five things that you are grateful for, whether it is that you just opened your eyes, whether you had something to eat, whether you had toothpaste to brush your teeth with, whatever. Count it. you know. And, and some of the stuff will be the same every day. Mm-hmm. And also do a, a, a list the same way of five things you've accomplished that day. Again, whether it be just waking up, uh, feeding your kid, that kind of stuff, taking mm-hmm. your medicine, whatever. After time, that helps become part of your foundation, and it has the ability to shift your attitude and your perspective. Uh, uh, that's awesome. Absolutely. All right, this last question is going to sound redundant, but I want you to share something different. I always like to end the show by having you guys share one word, one positive quote, or something just to people that are listening to live today, the rest of 2023 and beyond with. So Carrie, give me something. All right, here you go. Y'all ready for it? Yeah. How do you eat an elephant? How? One bite at a time. So share with the, yeah, just, I mean, Tyra, there you go. There's your elephant thing for the day, but. So my deal with that one is that, like I said, I had struggled feeling like a failure for so many, you know, years of my life. And I just had these, these unrealistic expectations and would bite off way more than I could chew and then would feel like a failure when I couldn't accomplish it. But there was really no possible way I could, you know. Once I, I heard that actually from a client of mine, Miss Carrie, how do you eat an elephant? It was a joke. But then it was like the, a light, huge light bulb. God was one of those God moments, like there's something in this. And I was like, Oh my gosh. And I literally started applying it every single day in my head. And it just, it gives me freedom. Mm-hmm. You know, if I can just bite one little piece off at a time, that's success. And one more piece and one more piece. And finally, you got the whole elephant eating. That's, that's awesome. I like Ashley? That. Um, mine would be never to judge a book by its cover because, um, individuals with special needs are often, uh, discounted. Thanks. We rehearsed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're often, you can't tell, but we rehearsed. Uh, they're just dis- discounted for their abilities. Um, look, look a little bit deeper and, oh my goodness, they're going to be the ones that change the world, mm-hmm. you know? Right. They just need a little bit of support and we're here to give it to them. There you go. Lauren? Um, on my business card that I love, it's one of my things that I always say. It says, worry ends when faith and God step in. Well, on my business card, it says Lauren, but when faith and God step in. Um, I thought you were going to say when Lauren steps in. Well, that's what it says on my business card, but it's oh, really gotcha. okay. my thing that I say is worry ends when faith and God step in. So your name should have been faith is what you're saying. No, <laughs> I like Lauren. So Thank you. Been easier. It would have been easier. Right, but, right. You know. Well, I also say this. I've been doing this uh, the last several shows as well, and I'm going to continue doing this as too. So everybody who was on before the last so three weeks, uh, it's a thank you. So the thank you is a lost art. It's just a simple thank you. So, Carrie, thank you for what you're doing for the people in the community in Bartow County. Ashley, thank you for what you're doing for the, the, the folks there in Polk. And, Lauren, thank you for helping me as well as everybody that we're helping. So, all right, everybody out there listening, let's remember, let's be positive, let's be charitable. <laughs>